In this lesson, we'll create a system that will automate the movement of the smaller arms. We can use expressions to control the movement of these arms, and we can make sure to factor in frames. That way, as we start to play back the animation, it'll automatically cause the arms to move. Now, another thing we'll want to work with is the sine and cosine function. That way we can cause the arms to cycle and almost look as if they are kind of reaching at you as they play back. It's going to be really exciting. and They'll move creature-like. Now before we start to build this expression, it'd be a good idea to create a multiplier that allows us to either turn off the movement when we set it to zero, or to either increase or decrease the amount of movement we receive. Let's go ahead and build this. We'll grab our center of gravity. I like to add this type of system either to that control or our global control, one of our main nodes, so it's easy for people to go ahead and access. They kind of have an idea of where something like that would live. All right, so with the center of gravity selected, let's go ahead and head over to our modify panel, and we'll now go ahead and add an attribute holder. From there, let's go ahead and right click and choose rename. And that's going to be extra controls. Now, let's press Alt 1 to grab our parameter editor. From here, we're going to name the parameter AUX underscore arms underscore multiplier. All right, sweet. Let's go ahead and add this, and you'll see that the name is kind of getting cut off. So we'll need to do a few things to fix this. For one, we could start to decrease the width of the parameter. Let's go ahead and bring our attention down to the testing attribute. So we'll start to drop this. I might set this to about, let's say, 95. Let's go ahead and make sure we work with that type of width so that we have more space here. Now, remember, in order for this to get applied to this parameter, we need to go to Edit, Delete, and select the parameter we'd like to modify. So after we have tested out our settings, we'll take a look. We can go ahead and now use that here. We'll type in 95. You'll see that the testing attribute will now get adjusted. When we choose Accept Parameter Changes and Apply Changes, it's kind of getting there, but you can see that even though the parameter's width is a bit smaller, we're still getting this problem where the name gets cut off. So what else can we do? We'll take a look. We have alignment settings. Right now it's set to center. What happens if we have our parameter lean over to the right side? Let's go ahead and click on right. Again, we'll click accept parameter changes, apply changes, and now we can see its name. All right, very nice. I'll go ahead and close out of our parameter editor now, and we're ready to start building our expression. Now, here's the cool part. When we're done with the left side, we could actually use the same expression on the right side. So arm A on the left would use the same expression as arm A on the right. And here's why. When we go ahead and grab our two roots on either side, let's make sure our rotate gizmo is set to gimbal, and we'll start to move in the z-axis. You can see how they kind of alternate. So when we go ahead and start to work with the same expression, we'll get this type of behavior, and it'll look very creature-like. All right, cool stuff. So we'll get started. We'll go ahead and start on the left side. We'll grab the root, and we'll head over to our motion panel. We'll go to rotation, zero Euler. We'll grab the Z controller, and we'll now go ahead and find our float expression controller. We'll choose OK. Next, we'll create our variable that we will assign our custom parameter to, and that's going to be named malt. We'll just keep it simple. It will be scalar since we're just dealing with one value. We'll click on Create, and now we need to go ahead and assign our controller. So with the variable selected, we'll click on Assign to Controller. Underneath Objects, Global, we'll expand the outside of our global control to get to the objects that we have linked to it, and here is the center of gravity. Let's expand the inside to get to Modified Object, Extra Controls, Custom Attributes, and there it is, the multiplier. Now with that selected, we can now go ahead and click on OK. And we can start to build out our expression. So here's what we'll do. 
first, we'll go ahead and factor in our frame count. That's going to be F. Take a look here. You can see F is assigned to frames. And let's go ahead and multiply by about 200 so we have a great enough range to work with. Now let's go ahead and wrap this in parentheses. And we'll go ahead and have our multiplier affect this. So it's going to be F times 200. And then we'll go ahead and multiply by mult. By wrapping in in parentheses, we're basically telling 3ds Max what order to evaluate this in. So we're saying, all right, factor in frames times 200 and then multiply mult by that result here. All right, great. Now we need to go ahead and take it a step further. We need to basically make sure that we have this type of sine wave pattern so that we can cause the arms to move back and forth instead of to constantly rotate. And that's what would happen here. So let's go ahead and put another set of parentheses that kind of contains everything. So we'll add an open parentheses before our first parentheses and we'll add a close parentheses after multiple. And from there, we can go to the very beginning of this and we'll type in our sine wave function. When we go ahead and now click on evaluate, let's go ahead and take a look at what we get. Right now, there's going to be no movement because our custom parameter is set to zero. But if we were to go back to our modify panel with the center of gravity selected, and if we were to go ahead and set this to something really low, like let's say 0.1, now you'll see that when we start to move away from frame zero, we're getting some movement, and it is moving back and forth. Take a look. So that's super cool. Now with our multiplier, if we were to increase this to about, let's say, 0.5, you'll see that the arm is going to move much faster. So we have a way to control the speed. Now, the range might be pretty extreme. One way to check that is to go to Manage Layers, go to your model, and go ahead and now play it back. I might go ahead and also drop this to about 0.1, the multiplier, and play this. So take a look. We're getting some interpenetration. So how do we fix the range? Because our multiplier, again, only controls the speed. Well, if you'd like to adjust the range, you'd simply go back to your expression. Let's go ahead and select the arm, go back to the motion panel, the z-axis, right-click and choose parameter properties. So all we need to do is go ahead and essentially take everything here and multiply by a lesser value so we decrease the range. So let's go ahead and wrap everything in parentheses here. And then we're going to go ahead and multiply by about 0.5. So that's going to be the multiplication operation and then we'll add a 0.5 after that. And we'll now go ahead and evaluate this. Now watch. If we were to bring our model back and play this back, you'll notice that we no longer get that interpenetration. Sweet. All right, super cool. So now that we have the expression we would use for all of our roots, what we now need to do is go ahead and work on cycling this movement. Let's go ahead and move to the next lesson, and we'll finish up our work with all of our expressions, and then we can... Just double check our rig to make sure everything is good before we move on to animation.